Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another bonus episode of The Morning Mindset. We started last week with an episode about Jesus changing everything. And we focused in on the story of Saul, who we know better as the Apostle Paul. He had his worldview radically altered by an encounter with Jesus Christ. And our conclusion, after looking at Paul prior to his conversion and what he believed about law-keeping being the way that he would be okay with God, and then looking at what his worldview changed to by looking in his own words in the book of Philippians, how he said he counted all of that prior belief and all the status and benefits that it brought to him as rubbish for the sake of knowing Jesus. So his worldview radically changed. Now, what I want to do today is continue looking at Saul's story, and we're going to be looking at it from the perspective of what it is like to respond to Jesus. Once you see him, once you encounter him, once you understand that he's challenging your worldview, what is your response going to be? And how does that response shape your ability to fashion a new worldview? Now, we're going to continue in Acts chapter 9, which is where we started out in the last bonus episode, looking at Paul's story. And if you pick up in the story where we left off, Saul was on his way to this town called Damascus to take Christians, Christ followers, into custody and arrest them, put them in prison because he saw them as a cult. But he encounters Jesus on the road. Rather, we might say Jesus encounters him, knocks him flat on his back, blinds him, and confronts him about his behavior toward Jesus' church. And that's where Saul's worldview began to be challenged because he asks, who are you, Lord? And I suspect he was thinking, God, you know, it would be the God he had conceived of that he understood from his Old Testament studies. But instead, the the voice said, it is Jesus who you are persecuting. And so Saul's gears were stripped, so to speak. He didn't know what to make of that. Now we're going to pick up in verse number 10. And it says, now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Now that word disciple infers he's a believer in Jesus. He's one who's already a Christian. And it says, this disciple at Damascus named Ananias, the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. Now let's stop there for a moment. And let's kind of pick apart Ananias' experience of responding to Jesus. See, somewhere in his past, he had had a similar encounter to Saul, where he had met Jesus and he had decided he was going to be a follower of Christ. And in this account, we find him again responding to Jesus as a disciple. And his worldview determined his response. That's something we need to always keep in mind. The way we view the world and what we believe about the world is always going to determine our response to situations. So in this situation, what were the things that Ananias believed that determined his response? Well, first off, Jesus is king. Ananias held that view. Why? Well, because when the king called to him, he answered. He was a disciple. He had already decided he was going to follow Jesus. Ananias also believed that Jesus speaks, that he leads, that he guides, that he directs. Because his heart was oriented toward God, he responded when Jesus called. It didn't surprise him when God spoke to him. God guided him. Jesus nudged him in a direction. And he responded accordingly. It's because of these beliefs he already had in place. Now, we've all heard the phrase, actions speak louder than words. I think that in this issue of worldview, that is absolutely true. Our actions are going to speak louder than our words. So in other words, we can say we hold to a Christian worldview. But if our actions don't align with that statement, there is something that's out of sync And as I think about it, there's probably three things it could be. Either you don't really believe the Christian worldview. I mean, believe in the sense that you would take action on it. Like you believe the chair is strong enough to hold you up, so you sit on it. You see, Christian faith, Christian belief requires action. Secondly, maybe you just haven't worked it through. You haven't spent the time pondering it enough. You haven't spent enough time really praying it through, letting the Lord teach you the truths that you're seeking to align your mind with. And then thirdly, it's possible that a stronger belief or a greater belief is overshadowing 
and causing you in the moment to prioritize your Christian worldview beneath that other belief. So maybe it's a belief that's fear generated or based in insecurity or doubt or something like that. Now, as we continue on, let's look at verse 11 and see another way that Ananias responded to Jesus. Verse 11 says, And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he's done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. So this is an interesting exchange here between Ananias and the Lord. The Lord's giving him instructions to go and be a blessing, be a benefit to Saul. And Ananias has some objections. And they seem pretty reasonable, don't they? I mean, he has heard about this guy, and he's trouble for Christians. But again, Ananias' worldview determines his response. First off, he believed that Jesus can be approached. He's friendly toward us once we've placed our faith in him. We are his sons. We are his daughters. We are with him in the journey. And as disciples, he wants us to be instructed. Ananias also understood that Jesus is patient. He wants to teach us. He wants to guide us. And so he expressed his fears and he asked his questions. And I'm curious, is this a mindset switch that you may need to make? Do you believe that Jesus is friendly toward you? Or do you still perhaps think of him as always frowning on you, always critical and always uh, wanting you to shape up? You see, God always wants us to be growing, but he also is patient in the process. And he also is gentle and kind as long as our hearts are oriented toward him in submission. Do you believe that Jesus wants you to learn? He wants you to grow. He wants you to understand and that he will help you in that process. Do you believe that it's okay for you to ask your questions? You see, all of these questions I'm asking you right now are worldview oriented questions. Do you believe those things about Jesus? And is there a mindset switch that you need to make in those areas? Then we're going to quickly have another break to hear from our sponsor, Colson Education. And when we come back, we're going to look at the next set of verses. And again, how Ananias responded. And then finally, how Saul responded and how his worldview was blown apart. Now, I hope you're learning that worldview is vital and that it is shaped in our lives. It doesn't just happen. We don't wake up with it by default when we're children. It's shaped from the earliest years of our lives automatically. And having the wrong worldview is disastrous because it simply doesn't work to produce a life that honors God and a life that's lived consistently with his reality. Now, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. The consequences of an incorrect worldview are evident in your life, and you would just raise your hand right away and say, yes, I've made the mistakes that have resulted in where I'm at in life. Or maybe you could say, my parents made the mistakes that have resulted in where I'm at in life. You know what I'm saying? There there are these ripple effects of how people's worldview affects living. But the good news is that worldviews can be reshaped, and worldviews can be taught. Think about it. We spend the bulk of our younger years being taught things in school, but we sadly neglect this all important area of developing a Christian worldview. And it doesn't have to be that way. There is help available. The free worldview formation curriculum provided by the Colson Center and Gilbert Christian Schools is an amazing resource. I've gone through the course myself. They have a 101 module and a 201 module, as well as some additional resources. The 101 and 201 are taught by Stefan Wilson. He's going to be a guest on a future bonus episode in a couple of weeks. And then the supplementary courses feature teacher and author Dr. Oz Guinness and others. And this free offer is specifically designed to help school administrators, teachers, homeschool teachers, and even parents instruct on the basis of a Christian worldview. 
But I also think anyone who wants to reform or modify or strengthen their worldview will benefit from going through this free video course. You can find out the details at kerrygreen.com slash worldview2. This is a sponsored promotion, but as I said in the last bonus episode, I don't take sponsorships unless I believe in the resource. And this is one I've gone through myself. This is one that will benefit you greatly. Okay, as we dive back into the situation with Saul on the road to Damascus, we're picking up in verse 15. It says, But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine. Now let's stop for a moment. Who's he speaking to? Remember, this is Ananias. He's speaking to this disciple that he wants to use to be a blessing to Saul as Saul is beginning to have his worldview reshaped. And the Lord says to Ananias, Go, he, Saul, is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. You see, that was all God's purpose for Saul's life. And he is in the process of bringing Saul to the realization of all of those things. Continuing in verse 16, he says, For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, so he laid his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now again, Ananias' worldview determined his response to this instruction that Jesus gave him. First of all, when Jesus said go, he went as commanded. That reveals that Ananias' worldview said Jesus is king. He calls the shots, I do what he says. Ananias also went and laid hands on Saul as instructed. Again, obedience to Jesus as the king. What he says goes. He's the ruler of creation. Surely he can rule our lives and he can lead us in the situations that we face. And then finally, Ananias spoke confidently in this situation, believing what Jesus said. We can see that by two different things he said. First off, he calls Saul, brother Saul. Did you catch that? He didn't continue in his objection, arguing with the Lord, so to speak, and saying, well, this guy's sketchy. I don't know if I want to trust him. You know, No, he took Jesus' word for it, that he is a chosen instrument of mine. And so Ananias accepted that because he trusted Jesus. And he went and he called Saul his brother, his brother in the Lord. And my friends, I think that these are examples of how Ananias had settled the matter in his mind already. He had chosen that Jesus is king. I'm going to follow Jesus wherever he leads, no matter what he asks. And in my experience, that is a fundamental mindset shift that we need to make as disciples of Jesus Christ. We may choose to receive his gift of forgiveness. We may choose to uh, verbally say, uh, I'm depending on Christ for my eternal salvation. And that is all good. But there is a place where we've got to come to the point that we acknowledge in our own heart and we determine in our own mind, if God leads me to do something, I will do it. If he calls me to do something through his word, I will obey it. I will apply to the best of my ability the things that he instructs me on. And this is all based on trust. It's based on a true belief in who he is. And those, my friends, are worldview issues. Do you view the world as owned and operated by God, so to speak, and that what he says goes? That commitment to obedience is vital for us as Christians. And it's a worldview shift that we all need to come to. Now let's continue on and we'll wrap up the passage in verses 18 and 19. It tells us what happens after Ananias laid his hands on Saul. It says immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Now I I don't know what that's all about. I mean, never seen scales or something like scales on someone's eyes. Maybe he had cataracts. Maybe he had uh, some sort of, uh, I don't know, But whatever it was, it happened instantly when Jesus burst onto the scene there on the road. 
And then here, it's just falling from his eyes. And it was visible. And then it says, Then he rose and was baptized. And taking food, he was strengthened. And for some days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. Now, right here is the point where I would say Saul's worldview of previously believing that his life of of works-based righteousness was going to put him in good stead with God, that just got blown out of the water. He's realizing God is not about us keeping a lot of rules. God is about providing for us not only the means to be forgiven, but also the means to overcome our sinfulness and to overcome our, our fallen self by receiving from Jesus a new life in a new creation, as Paul says in, Coloss- in the book of Corinthians. You see, Jesus, who Saul previously thought was absolutely false, was a false messiah, became his king. And that's a monumental worldview shift. His fundamental beliefs changed. And when he f- placed his faith in Jesus as his messiah and as his king, he was baptized. Now, baptism is an act of identification. It's a symbolic act. It's a, it's a demonstration to everyone who's watching that you are aligning yourself with Jesus. And Saul took that step after he believed. And he began the process of reshaping his worldview. And he, he began it right here, actually, when you see for some days he was with the disciples at Damascus. That means he's hanging out with people who already knew Jesus, who already were living for him. And he's watching, he's learning, he's observing. We can just kind of infer from that statement that that's what was going on in those days. Now, friends, here's the application to wrap all this up. Everyone can reshape their worldview according to God's reality. I mean, we know Saul's story. Actually, we know Paul's story. What happened after all of this? He went from being a legalistic Pharisee to a grace-filled apostle and became the author of almost a quarter of the New Testament. He's one of those heroes of the faith that we look to, and it all happened because Jesus entered his life and reshaped his worldview according to God's reality. I, I can't imagine a more extreme worldview switch than what Saul, Paul, underwent. I mean, and look at the results. Look what happens when you think and live according to God's reality. He became one of the most influential individuals besides Jesus himself in the history of the church because he was willing to let Jesus shape his reality by teaching him what was reality. Now, it wasn't without his difficulties. Um, Did you notice when Jesus was talking to Ananias, he said of Saul, he said, I will show him how much he must suffer. I mean, there was going to be some issues that Saul, Paul, was going to go through. But he was willing because he had shifted his worldview to accept Jesus as his king. Friends, I appreciate your time as you've gone through this with me. In our next bonus episode, we're going to talk about what it's like to see the world through new eyes, the new eyes of a shifted worldview. And I want to remind you not to forget about the Colson Center's free curriculum on worldview formation. You can find it at kerrygreen.com slash worldview2.